I had a conniption recently, which on its own isn't anything new, but the source of it was... I ran out of Oricon cells. Yeah, who would have thunk? I mean, it's not like they're used for anything. Oh, right. The, uh, the prime weapons. Well, at any rate, I need to farm up some more. Can you imagine? Someone like me? Farming for a resource? Like some kind of MR5 peasant? Alright, so what do we have for options? Okay, we can either do Dark Sector Survivals and rely on enemy drops, or Vor and Krill Assassination Spamming. Yeah, hey team, I'll be in your orbiters in five minutes. Uh, cancel all your plans, we're going resource farming. On it. Having enough orc and cells to build everything I want is nice and all, you know, but I want something greater. I want to have enough orc and cells to never have to ever farm for them again, such as the creed of all great Warframe players. Thankfully, like all things in Warframe, you can build for that. So just how hard can we juice our resource output? Farm maxing, if you will. But before we can do anything, what does it mean to drop something? Let's put this into terms any gamer can understand. When you go to the casino, all the slot machines have odds to either hit a jackpot, hit a regular payout, or give you nothing. In Warframe, there are multiple RNG rolls that happen when you kill an enemy. And the first one is to determine whether you even get an item or not. We'll call this loot chance. Many trash mobs have very low loot chance, while special enemies and bosses can have up to or even higher than 100% drop chances. After you pass that loot chance roll, then you get access to an enemy's drop tables, which include mods, endo, and of course, region resources, which are determined by the planet you're on and have varying rarities. To nobody's surprise, on planets that can drop them, Oricon cells are the rarest resource drop. Like all things in life, the first step to efficient farming requires a down payment. That's right, we're talking about boosters. The blue drop chance booster doubles the chances that all enemies in your mission, regardless of whoever kills them, will drop something. And in the cases where that drop something chance goes above 100%, again, you have a chance to get more than one loot pull at the same time. This stacks with the yellow resource booster, which takes your gained loot from a mission and just multiplies it by two. And I mean, are these absolutely necessary? Of course not. But you know what they say, time is money after all. And you've probably got something on your ship that you can trade for more platinum, right? Right? You fool! That's a Smita Kavat. He's essential to the entire farming operation. These guys are a gambler's best friend, because at set intervals, they just have a chance to give you one of several buffs, one of which is hacking, spitting, and throwing up a rare region resource right out of nowhere. You can also get an extra 25% loot drop chance at any relay. You just need a resource drop chance blessing bestowed upon you by the generous MR30 or higher player once per day. So get out there and start begging for handouts. Lastly, of course, is our choice of venue. First up is to toggle on Steel Path, obviously. Not only do all enemies have double the odds of dropping loot, but you can also just passively farm Arcanes and Steel Essence. We also want to pick a Dark Sector mission like Gabby, which has a bespoke additional 35% resource drop chance boost. So that's our pregame done, with these bonuses coming together to give us plus 260% bonus loot chance, plus a flat 2x multiplier on top of everything we collect. Nice. Now let's talk team comp. There are actually a surprising number of frames out there with the ability to get funky with the Warframe drop tables, so let's try and squeeze as many of them as we can into our team comp. First up is Necros, obviously. This guy's the true blue, original farming Warframe thanks to his desecrate ability where he recycles the bodies of your enemies into extra loot. Now the ability has a base 54% chance to take a corpse and re-roll on its will I get loot today table but we can increase this. When a high enough amount of slash damage is used to kill an enemy, instead of just falling down normally, they'll become bisected and count as two separate entities for Necros. So that's an expected 108% increase in our gains right there if we can split and desecrate every body. Man, Necros is kind of messed up, isn't he? Hydroid is also a common farming frame. It only makes sense that a pirate would be all about collecting more booty. And with the pilfering swarm augment, he can. 
This gives a 100% chance to roll an enemy's loot check again. This is by base the best increase in drop chances you can get from an ability. So, by the laws of equivalent exchange, it's gotta have some jank to it. The enemies have to be grabbed by tentacles to drop their loot, and the tentacles can't grab Xmas units through their overguard. But again, it effectively doubles your loot compared to just gadding an enemy. It's worth trying to play around. Next, our second pilfering augment warframe, it's Korra, whose pilfering strangle dome works incredibly similar to hydroid tentacles. Enemies held in the playground structure from hell have a 60% chance to spin the slot machine again when killed. I assume this is lower than hydroids because it pulls enemies into a single area and Korra can obliterate every enemy captured with a single button press. It's easier to use, so you get less reward from it. Those are the more popular farming abilities, but now here's where things get weird. You see, you'd think that, oh, I'll just put down Hydroid's Kraken here, and then I'll drop a Strangle Dome on top of that, and then I'll sit Necros down in the middle, and then I'll get, uh, 268% of normal drops, right? The script just says, extremely loud incorrect buzzer here. Yeah, so, no. Remember what I said about farming profits being inversely related to the amount of suffering you have to go to? Hydroid and Korra's augments are both classified as on death, meaning they drop their extra loot right as the enemy dies. This also means that they don't stack with one another. So while you could have both frames on your team fighting over who can grab the most Grenier, like you're in the merch line on the last day of Tenocon, we can safely drop one of these two from our farming dream team lineup. So we're back to two farming frames. Who else can we add to the team? How about Atlas and his ore gaze? No, not those ones. I meant, I meant the augment. Orgaze allows Atlas to not only scan every enemy he hits with his Petrify ability into the Codex, but breaking the Petrified enemy has a base 25% chance at another slot machine pull, which is incredibly low, but it does scale with power strength. So if you somehow manage to dump insane amounts of strength into him, like literally as much as you possibly can, you could theoretically reach 100% loot chance with an ability that is very easy to cash in on. Now, you might think this is another on-kill farming ability, but the wiki is very adamant that this is not the case, and that it stacks with Korra and Hydroid's abilities. Although, with Hydroid, the tentacles just can't grab immobilized enemies, and Strangle Dome just doesn't grab petrified enemies. So yeah, Atlas, you're, uh, you're off the team, buddy, sorry. And we've actually got one more Warframe who can farm. One you probably don't expect, but actually has insane drop rates. By using Prowl, Ivara can pickpocket nearby enemies for a guaranteed loot drop. That's pretty huge, because you completely skip the drop chance check and go straight into getting loot. The glaring downside is that, of course, you have to position your paper-thin Ivara in the midst of a bunch of enemies, which can result in her getting turned into King Super's Deli Swiss Cheese. Also, you gotta take care not to bump into enemies, because... Yeah. So that's it then, right? Five farming frames from which we can make our perfect farming team. <laughs> what? No, th this is a farming video. I'm talking about Warframes that boost drop chances. <laughs> but it... But it's not, right? You get that. No, no, absolutely not. You're already the go-to frame for 90% of content in this game. Why would I- oh. Upon further consideration, I believe that Wukong, as well, is a candidate for the farming Warframes team. Don't believe me? Watch. Monkey Luck has a chance to activate when Wukong dies, reviving him from death, and granting him 60 seconds of bonus loop drops from enemy- Dude, this is ass. Farming missions go way longer than 60 seconds. I can't call you a farming frame just because- Oh, you pussy. <laughs> All right, so our team ended up being Necros, a max range Hydroid, and a range duration Ivara to hide on a wire above the carnage and pickpocket whoever they can. This left one slot open for the third friend I don't have who plays Warframe, who could have played Vauban, Speed Nova, or Mag to specialize in crowd control and getting enemies into our wacky farming zone. This gave us a 208% extra chance at drops from Necros and Hydroid and Ivara, who could guarantee an item pull as long as they were close enough to an enemy to steal it from them. So let's just call that a plus 50% loot drop chance boost on average. So that gives us 258% bonus loot drop chance from our Warframes, which can then stack with all our other boosters to give us a grand total of, drum roll please, 518%.
out, which is a lot already, right? But then you remember that our resource booster applies after all other bonuses and doubles everything for a mind-boggling 1,036% chance increase to all of our theoretical loot gains. But what are our base loot gains? Surprisingly enough, I could find nowhere on the wiki that lists the actual drop chances of Oricon cells as region resources, so I decided to do a little experiment. One run of Gabby on the non-steel path star chart. No boosters, no blessings, no loot bonuses, just a Volt and a Helios. It was incredibly boring, and I got exactly one Oricon cell for 30 minutes of work, which I honestly wasn't expecting. To get that off of base drops is pretty lucky, but luck's for cowards and losers. So after that, I pulled out my credit card, bought a set of boosters, and then sat in relays with my friends to beg for resource blessings. So, um, we type in the chat, anyone got a little resource drop? Blessing. What emoji should I do? I'm gonna do the satisfied emoji. Are you uh, factoring in the time it takes to get this blessing into your stats? Uh, <laughs> oh, we should, shouldn't we? That's not oh. the right one! Okay, I have a better idea. What if we all go to different relays and ask for handouts? As long as there's oh. one, as long as there's one resource drop chance blessing, in our party, it should count for everyone. Guys, I've gotta hit some sick farm. I need this. My children will starve otherwise. Bad face emoji. I got it. Am got it. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> let's go, let's get out of here. And with that, we were ready. According to my calculations, I was set to make 10 times the loot I had before. But I'll be the first to admit it. I was nervous. What if my calculations were incorrect? What if I didn't get as many cells as I expected? And I was right to doubt my math, because I didn't get the amount of cells I expected. I got way more, dude. Oh, I got two more cells. Oh, I got two more cells. I got two more cells. I just got six cells and... 20 seconds. Hey. Now it's that's working! Cool. Yeah. It's working, we're up to the estimate. I got two more cells! Oh, I'm gosh. rich! I'm rich! Oh. Oh, I just picked up four Oricon cells? What? What? Oh. Insane. Oricon cell over here, I just pickpocketed. I saw it drop off pickpocket. On three? We do get him, we do get him. So oh, that one was four! Us. You pickpocketed two Oricon cells from that man? Yeah. We found it, Zach. This is it. We'll never have to farm for Oricon cells ever again. Yeah, so that estimate of 11 Oricon cells for 30 minutes was way off the mark. It might have been the unexpected boon of Ivara's pickpocket, or maybe I got really lucky with my Smita Kavat procs, or maybe it was some form of higher intervention, because I walked away from that half-hour survival mission with 38 Oricon cells. Also, mid-session, we discovered that Ivara cannot pickpocket enemies grabbed by hydroid tentacles. I'm not even surprised at this point. Uh, like, something to consider is Ivara's thing it doesn't seem to work on things inside the tentacles. So I have to stand before they hit Oh, the of course it doesn't. Wow. D.E.U. hacks. So what's our takeaway here? If you stack every single possible farming buff on top of each other, it, shocker, gives you way more loot? Maybe, but I think it also goes to show that in a game like Warframe, there's no issue that cannot be solved by min-maxing. And to a further extent, no issue that cannot be optimized to hell and back by min-maxing as a team. I got an insane amount of Oricon cells from this, and my teammates got a good amount too. About half my haul since they didn't have a resource booster. So we should all be good on having to farm cells for, let's say the rest of our Warframe careers? Hey, if that necessity ever comes around again, there's been a blueprint for sales in the marketplace this whole time.